Hi, hello, I'm Sam Harris and I read, review and discuss fantasy and science fiction books. Today we are talking about, well, not talking about, we're reviewing Shadow of Hyperion by JCM Byrne. This is the fourth book in the Hybrid Helix series. Fifth, if you count Partial Function, which is kind of like a side series, side call. They are related, they're in the same universe, but you could read... Um, Shadow of Hyperion without if you wanted to. Um, so Shadow of Hyperion is um, a superhero sci-fi space opera. Um, I have read all of the books in this series now and um, oh quick note yes I've read all of the books in this series I may have to talk about story elements from previous books in order to fully review this one but I will not be spoiling this book at all. So if you've read the other books, but you haven't read this one, you can enjoy this. Um, and if you have not read the other books, I would highly recommend them. This is one of my favorite sci-fi series and definitely the best independent sci-fi, uh, independently published sci-fi series that I've read. Um, so uh, if you put any stock in my opinions at all, I would highly recommend the Hybrid Helix. Highly hybrid. Hmm. So, the main character in this series of books is called Rohan. He is a human-alien uh, hybrid. And being a hybrid essentially allows him access to like a reservoir of power, um, which is kind of metaphysical and enables him to do superheroic things like um, lift, lifting himself off the ground and flying, um, superhuman strength, um, is able to heal very quickly and you know many conventional weapons aren't able to truly damage him or hurt him um really uh, really fun power set you look at um rohan and he's very similar to someone like superman um apart from the fact that he is um he's not invulnerable he's just hard to hurt and hard to kill um which i think is a, a more interesting way of doing your superheroes and we see this a lot with place Peter uh, with um invincible which I, I would imagine is probably an inspiration for this book um because invincible is a human alien hybrid and also has similar sorts of powers and you know can be her it's just difficult sort of thing um so yeah rohan so rohan essentially w leaves earth in his like early 20s and um, is drafted into the army of the people of whom he's an alien hybrid of and uh, he along with other hi hybrid heroes from earth are all pulled into this kind of conflict to um kind of protect the universe in some from kind of some interpretation but then Rohan is also asked to do some kind of shady and stuff that you might think that he kind of thinks is objectionable. Um, he's responsible for a lot of death. Um, and then he basically makes a deal with these alien emperors and he's like, right, please let me retire out of the army. If you let me retire, then I will do this one last thing for you. Um, the one last thing is a very, very big and very dangerous job that no one expects him to survive and when he does oh you're right gus he's going to look out the window when he does the the um alien race basically gives him his freedom and he takes that freedom and goes to work on a space station as a tow chief so basically he uses his superhuman powers to fly out into space and tow spaceships into dock because the spaceships using engines near the space station could cause issues. So basically everyone gets towed in, whether it's by a shuttle or by a person. Um, and so that's his job. That's his day to day. Uh, and unfortunately for him, even though he's retired, he keeps getting kind of dragged back into different kinds of shenanigans. Um, this book starts with um, him being asked for a favor. Um, or to return a favour, more accurately. And um, he has to go back to Earth and rescue somebody. That somebody that he rescues 
ends up being a character that we all thought was dead. And um, we then follow this character and Rohan as they kind of learn why they're back, who they are, what they are, and this sort of stuff. Um, the This book was really interesting because the basically... The first book is all set on the Wistful space station. Then the second book is, is all set on Earth. The third book is then again set all on Wistful. But this final book in the series, currently there's more to come. Um, book four is uh, kind of a mix. So they spend like a third of the book on Earth. Then uh, the, uh, like a, a third or a smaller section on another uh, planet and then another uh, big chunk on the space station on Wistful um, and being able to see those varying environments in the same book was really good um, I really enjoyed uh, the subplot in this one which felt um, so there's like a rebellion against the Empire subplot essentially in this book um, and I really enjoyed the perspectives on it so we have Rohan's perspective we have um, while everything is kind of from his point of view, we do get to see through conversation the, the perspectives of other characters, which I thought was really interesting because Rohan's kind of defeatist and fatalist about this empire. Like, he knows that they're not good, but he's very much like, well, the alternative is, is worse. Um, and the people who've tried to take it down, um, you know, their entire races have been sterilised and genocided. So... It's really interesting in, in how, uh, you know, the, the fatalism, but also, like, actually, maybe they are the best option. You get all of these interesting characters from Wistful. You get the interesting characters from Earth. Um, and then you get this kind of companion character, this long-dead or thought-dead character that appears uh, as pretty much a, 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 the, the second most important character in the book. Overall, I thought that um, the plot was really, really good, and it actually managed to really surprise me. So, uh, the eventual reveal of what's going on near the end of the book was really good, um, and uh, most of the time, I can guess what's going on when it comes to like, oh, this is a mystery in the book, but I didn't guess it at all, um, and. Uh, the, the clues were all there, so it wasn't like one of those ones where, like, oh, nobody could have known that. The clues are all there. I, I didn't guess it at all. And, in fact, I had an alternate theory based on the title of the book. Um, I had an alternate theory that was completely wrong. Um, but I thought that it was, like, I had this idea. I was like, oh, maybe it's this. And I was kind of assuming it was throughout the whole book. So really, really grateful um i'm grateful is really the wrong term but like really hype to have been surprised by this book because that me like when we come to other a lot of other books i guess not guess the twists but like i often put together the clues uh so that when a thing happens i'm like oh yeah that makes sense rather than here where i was like oh my god yes i had no like I had no force, forethought that that was going to be the case, and it ended up being so, which I really enjoyed. The characters in this one are great again. So Rohan's always great. So Rohan is a really good protagonist, and I think because you see everything through his POV, that's very important. You get that. So there's like there are protagonists in book series that I have read where I've been like, oh, I'm not actually that jazzed or interested in this particular character who is the POV, but I do like. Um, the story and those books often I'm often I don't gel that well with um, so for example Empire of Silence I wasn't that sold on Hadrian to start with um, which is why I think that book didn't really hit for me um, subsequent books he's a, he's he's much better more like a character I want to read about but Rohan has always kind of been my kind of character um, uh, he does that thing where he like makes inappropriate jokes to like you know calm the nerves or whatever um and uh, it reminds me a lot of a lot of my favorite comic book characters um so yeah big uh, big fan of rohan um i think his supporting cast is really good so you've got like whaley is great 
Um, not enough Wei Li in this book. We need more Wei Li. Um, and um, yeah, uh, the T Tamara and uh, Lonnie were both really fun uh, kind of supporting characters from the subplot. And then I really like the stone, the stones, the doctor's stone. And I think one of the most interesting characters in this series is the space station herself, Wistful, um, uh, who is originally you're like, oh, this is this is just like the space station AI. And then she's grown, I feel like, in terms of how the characters view her to be much more of a kind of sentient individual with her own motivations and her own um like purpose um which may not be the same as the purpose of all the people that live on board her um which i genuinely think is great um i really like the world of this series i like the world building as well and um, so we learned a lot about the wedge in this book which you can they're like zombie dinosaurs you can see them on the cover um we learned a lot about the wedge and about the ring gate which has been hinted at and discussed over the last three books um and i thought that was really really cool um i was hoping to see some of the characters from partial function pop up um and i won't spoil as to whether they do um but uh definitely worth reading both books reading partial function as well as shadow of hyperion in partial function actually came out later than shadow of hyperion but um Joe, JCM Byrne himself, um, told me in a comment on a video that um, I would probably enjoy reading them the other way around. So reading um, Partial Function and then Shadow of Hyperion. So now I'm fully up to date on the Hybrid Helix and um, I'm a bit sad because there's no book to read next month. Um, however, there is a fifth book coming out this year. Um, so genuinely super hyped to read that. Um, I don't know whether I'll be able to uh, read it day one, as I like to do with a lot of indie releases. Um, we'll have to see whether my schedule and the previous book I'm reading lines up. Um, I definitely will try and line it up, though. Um, so, yeah, I'll be reading it pretty soon after it's published, I'm sure. Um, anyway, I'm also hoping to uh, carve some time out of my parenting schedule to uh, have an interview video with Joe, um, who said um, he'd love to do so. Um, so basically, what I have to do is see if there's any times when my wife wants to go out for the afternoon or evening, uh, you know, afternoon probably, on a weekend, and see if we can link up and do a video, um, which I think would be really fun. If you've got any questions you want me to ask, um, please drop them in the comments, and I will come back to them when we actually do arrange to have our video um yeah i think that's everything i mean like i don't oh i didn't give you the score i gave it five stars um i uh did veer between a four and a five on this one um so but i think that the the ending combined with um the kind of surprise of the oh i, I didn't get that I didn't work that out that um reveal being such a big surprise kind of pushed it up towards a five for me um so yeah fantastic book really enjoyed it um i highly recommend the hybrid helix series i've said it so many times in all of my video reviews for them and in a uh, very unfortunately the hybrid helix book reviews are some of my least watched videos so even though i'm incredibly passionate about them people don't know because they don't watch these videos which is fine and i'm not going to stop doing them i will always do book reviews i think that's a really important thing for me because that was one of the things that drew me to doing the channel was talking to people about books is the thing that I wanted to do. And book reviews are the best way to do that. So, yeah, I mean, let's wrap it all around and say I'd highly recommend the Hybrid Helix series. All of them are on Kindle Unlimited. So if you're a fast reader, you could pay for a month of Kindle Unlimited and read all four books and partial function because they're not massively long books. Um, they're all really nicely bingeable as well the prose is really accessible and fun um so yeah i think five out of five loved it can't wait for the next one if you've read shadow of hyperion please let me know by dropping down in the comments and telling me what you thought about it if you are uh, like this video 
then drop the drop a video a like on the video so that you can let me know and of course please subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified when i upload something new thanks so much for watching today and i'll speak to you tomorrow <laughs>